On this channel, we reviewed quite a few homebrews for the Atari 2600. If you're new to the channel, a homebrew is a recent release for a 40 plus year old console, the Atari 2600. People are still developing and releasing games today. People started pondering the, the word, what is a homebrew exactly versus a probrew? David Crane, one of the original co-founders of Activision, if you've heard of Blizzard, you know Activision. So with the Atari 2600, we had developers such as David Crane create Pitfall, which was huge. Gary Kitchen made Keystone Papers, another multi-level, side-by-side, uh, phenomenal game. They recently formed a company again called Audacity Games, and they're releasing games again. If you haven't seen my review for Circus Convoy, I'll go ahead and link it up here so you can check it out. Um, but I'm pretty excited about this. Like, the old greats have come back, and it's, it's the second coming of the Atari 2600 developers. Um, they really cir- they- They created a uh, They created a company called Audacity Games. And they put out a press release not long ago saying that they are going to release a few uh, up-and-coming games. They're, uh, they had two that they announced, Circus Convoy and, well, it was called Gold Rush. Now I think it's called Casey's Gold or something. I'll have to look that up. Um, so these are for the, the Atari 2600, although they plan to get more developers on board and release for uh, multiple platforms. They came out and said, these aren't homebrews, these are pro-brews. And that sent the homebrew community going like, well, what is a homebrew then versus a pro, versus a pro-brew? Because look, I mean, these are from uh, Atari age. Most of these games are from Atari Age. There's a lot of different homebrew developers out there and even publishers. Uh, Atari Age does happen to be the, the biggest, most popular one right now. And, but there, there are other great ones as well. But let's take Money Vision's Tire Trap, for example. So, Pro Brew. You get a designer to design your box and packaging. It comes with instructions, and you can even order different versions of the game, such as the cartridge only, the collector's edition, the collector's VIP edition, and the you just get more stuff. So yeah, it's it's professionally done, and it, and it's fun. But let's take a, let's take Muddy Vision's tire tracks for uh, for example. So tire tracks, look. That looks like the old school Activision games, but this is Muddy Vision. But if you would look at that cartridge now, you'd say, that's an Activision game. Uh, just because they did such a good job on the design. Um, Muddy Vision logo here. This is good product design right here. It's, 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 it's actually amazing because it, it replicates the old Activision games to a T, down to the font, down to the rainbow design, down to the, the, the famous Activision sunset. Um, on the back, you get a description of the game, a couple screenshots, and, and of course you get a glossy, well-designed, well-put-together instruction manual. So, pro brew versus home brew, that's what people started thinking. Are, are, are we pro brew or home brew? Uh, at least this is what I'm seeing inside the forums right now. And, and when I started seeing this, I'm just like, eh, semantics. What I consider all these to be is just professional releases. Um, just because it does take a substantial effort. Most of these people work over a year on their game. It takes a substantial effort to develop these games and then get a designer to design the packaging, create the content for the instructions, design the instructions, get these printed. Uh, the publisher, who is Atari Age, will put it all together, put them into cartridges, 
pay quarters. The, they are professional releases in my opinion, just like this. Now, I'm not saying that I think uh, the guys at Audacity created this, uh, this nomenclature issue on purpose. I think they're just saying like, no, we're, we're like the real old Activision developers and we're creating a company and we're gonna start releasing retro games which I think is cool. So, so I just thought it was uh, funny that a lot of people just started questioning, like, what, what, what is this then? Let me look at this cartridge. Looks like an old Atari 2600 game. Again, great design by the font. Oh, and, and what, what about this? Here's a homebrew called Halo 2600, who was written by Ed Fries. Now, th this was called a homebrew, but you know, it was, made by obviously a professional video game developer. I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because because I, I, I want peace in the homebrew world. Most of the homebrews, you know, if you get them with a box, cost around $50, and that's mostly just for time, material, publisher, plastic for the cartridges, which is just hard to come by, the boards they're put on. And uh, people aren't centric when they buy these. They they buy the homebrews because they want to show their support. That's the type of community this homebrew community is, is, is we can download the bin file, the .bin file, and put it on our Retron and play it for free. But we want that experience of getting a new package in the mail, opening the box, and most of all, smelling the new box, and and you you can't smell a download, uh, but you can smell a new game, and we love it, and we love the the routine and the ritual of plugging this in, flipping in on the old uh, switch, and watching the game come up immediately. Now there are you know different levels of quality with a homebrew. A lot of people just want to try out their skills on programming a tar, uh, an Atari game. Uh, they might pick up Atari Basic, or they might want to go all out and learn assembly, um, which maximizes your your space on the cartridge. Because one of the challenges is with writing an Atari game is the limited memory. You do, you only have typically on a standard cartridge 16 kilobytes, which is just over. 16,000 characters to work with and I don't develop these games but I'm sure a lot of the developers will say yeah but that's taken up by a lot of other stuff too so you don't actually have that much. On top of that all the memory is separated into different banks and you have to manage where all that code goes and how it's handled and processed so it's a challenge to write these games and manage the memory with such technological limitations. That's part of the appreciation for people creating these games as well. And they keep getting better after 40 years of experience of playing video games or figuring out new tricks still. If you don't have this game, it's a must. Draconian by uh, Spiceware. Just technological feats in developing for a 40 year old system. It's, it's, uh, I, I did review this one also. If you want to see that review, I'll link to the, that one as well. They're all professional releases. But as I was saying, um, there are different levels of, of homebrews. Again, some people are just doing it as a hobby. They'll spend a few weeks and create a game and put it out, the, out into the community and say, look what I made. And we download it and we play it for five minutes and we're like, ah, cool, good job. There's also hacks where somebody takes... Um, a previously made classic Atari 2600 game such as Demon Attack, uh, which was super popular at the time, and then they'll say, you know what, I'm going to modify that a little bit, make it a little bit better, make it a little bit harder because we played this for so long and, and uh, we want something a little more challenging and something that looks a little different. So that's where this one came through, Invader X. It's, it's, it's a hack of... Uh, demon attack and it's it's well done you know there's just people playing around there's people that do hacks there's people that spend a little bit more time and then there's people that just you know go all out and create great games for the atari 2600 
take the time to get a designer, design that package, package it up, and get let you order it and get it in the mail. I'm, I'm going to mention this one more time because I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, I've done so in so a lot of my other videos, but I believe the Atari 2600 game gave us enough graphics to let our mind go wild with imagination. As games progressed and gave us more graphics, there was less mystery, less imagination involved. It's it's like grabbing a book and reading a book and you make up the characters in the, their, your head, what they look like, what the land around them was like. And then you go see the movie and you're like, eh, that's not what I pictured it. When it's given to you, I don't think, I think that takes away some of the charm, but with an Atari 2600 game, you're just given enough for graphical context and then you're you can let your imagination just go wild with that we love atari 2600 games that's why we support the homebrew community so anyway to sum up here i think because of the effort the design the production value the publishers involved to get this done the homebrews are professional releases just like the pro brew is a professional release they're all synonymous. They're all one and the same to me. There is a little bit of romanticism involved when you think about the original Activision developers creating a company for the Atari 2600 specifically to release new games. That is really cool. I think it kind of validates where we are too as fans of the Atari 2600 and how much we invested into it and told all our friends about it kind of validates, hey, we were onto something. I like to get this stuff and share it with other people because I get this stuff and go, people gotta know about this. And that's why I make videos, just to let people know about this. I get excited, I get passionate, and I want to tell the world about things. That's just how I am. Let me know what you think. Pro brew versus home brew. Are they synonymous? Is there a difference? You know where I stand. I think that's about it.